everyone. Um, my name is Marco Minghini and I'm very happy to uh, be the chair of this uh, very last talk of the day for the academic track. Not the last talk of the conference, but the last of the 10 talks that uh, the academic track scientific committee was very happy to uh, give you uh, today. Of course, thanks to uh, all our beautiful speakers. And uh, uh, the speakers of the next uh, talk will be uh, Jennings, uh, Anderson, and uh, Ditto uh, Sarkar. Um, so Jennings is a geoinformation scientist uh, working as a postdoc researcher at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, he has been studying the evolution uh, of the OSM community and building uh, contributor-centric OpenStreetMap data analysis tools for the past uh, seven years. Uh, then we have uh, Dipto. He's a lecturer of geographic information science at the University College Cork in Ireland, and uh, he is also interested in studying OSM as a database and uh, a community, both of which are intrinsically linked. And they will give us uh, a very interesting talk uh, about titled Curious Cases of Corporations in OpenStreetMap. So I would uh, uh, now leave the, the floor to the, to, the, to the talk, and then we will be back uh, here for the Q&A session. Uh, in the meantime, I invite uh, the audience to just access the pad and ask or write your questions um, uh, during the, the, the talk. And then we will uh, ask those questions to the authors afterwards. So enjoy the talk. Hello, my name is Jennings Anderson, and today I will be presenting our research titled Curious Cases of Corporations in OpenStreetMap. This is work done in collaboration with Dipto Sarkar. So let's pick up where we left off. Last year, we presented our research on the growing phenomenon of corporate editors in OSM. This involved first quantifying the edits sponsored by these 10 companies. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of the corporations that employ OSM editing teams, but at the time, these 10 companies had publicly disclosed their lists of paid editors and described their editing activities. There are possibly many more, but these are some of the largest to date. Today, we've also added three more companies to our measures, Digital Egypt, Light Ciphers, and the ride-sharing company Lyft. Overall, the scale of paid editing in OSM is increasing. This graph quantifies corporate edits in the last five years. As of March 2020, 17% of the global road network, as measured by kilometer, was last edited by a member of a corporate data team. So how do we quantify this editing activity in OSM? All of our data processing relies on the tile reduced processing framework of Map from Mapbox, which allows us to process OSM in only minutes. Using a combination of OSM QA tiles, QA Tiles Plus, and a new project, OSM Interactions, which is built on the OSHDB project from the Heidelberg Institute for Geoinformation Technology, we search for specific types of edits to OSM elements and then compare the metadata to lists of known user IDs associated with each of these corporate editing teams. You can learn more about each of these tile sets at the link shown on this slide. The image on the right shows an excerpt of the OSM Interactions tile set that contains the editing history for every highway object in OSM. In this case, this is a screenshot of San Francisco, and if you look closely there, you can see many overlapping lines representing multiple interactions um, by different users to specific highway objects. So now that we know how to quantify it, let's look at the geographic coverage of paid editing activities. So this represents the aggregate of all 13 of the companies on the previous slides. And between 2016, 2017, and 2018, we see a growing activity across most of the world. And in 2019, the global activity continues to increase with these new editing hotspots in various cities around the world. And this is how each company measures up. These are the numbers that were presented last year. And this is where corporate editing is at today. Apple is currently doing the most work on the map. Cart is just behind Apple in quantity. Amazon's rate of editing is growing rapidly as their logistics team incorporates data from their delivery drivers. They are active primarily in North America and the United Kingdom. Facebook's editing team is editing at a fairly consistent rate here with the slope of that red line. 
And note that Mapbox was the first paid editing team, but has really plateaued in activity since the other corporations have started to edit. Digital Egypt has been very active in the past year, editing primarily in Cairo. And finally, Grab has also been consistently editing over the past two years. So this is the current state of corporate contributions to OSM. Today, however, we're just going to take a closer look at the OSM related activities of just these three companies. Grab, active primarily in Southeast Asia. Digital Egypt, active primarily in Egypt, Cairo to be more precise. And lastly, we'll add another corporation to the list, Tesla. While Tesla may not directly employ a data team to edit the map, we're going to explore some interesting Tesla-related editing activity in late 2019. So first, Grab. Grab is a Singapore-based company active in Southeast Asia, offering ride-hailing, uh, transport, food delivery, and payment services. Grab is actively editing OSM data since 2018 and has thus far edited more than 1.6 million features. And Grab's focus on transport-related services implies that a navigable road network is a priority. Road topology and navigation restrictions are non-trivial to encode. We're talking, of course, about turn restrictions in OSM. Turn restrictions are relation elements that involve way elements, typically with the highway tag, and describe relevant routing information between them, such as no right turn or right turn only, etc. So let's look at some turn restrictions globally. These are visualizations from a project called QA Tiles Plus. They're created by extracting all the restrictions from the planet file and then putting them into something that looks like an OSM QA Tiles format. Here's the turn restrictions uh, present in San Francisco. And here's where there's turn restrictions in London. Here's the turn restrictions in Frankfurt, Mexico City, and Rome. Now, according to tag info, there are 1.3 million relations with this restriction key. This is, these are the turn restrictions in Singapore. 7% of the turn restrictions globally are in Singapore. And here's an animation of the work that the Grab team has been doing in the past two years. The dots on the map represent turn restrictions. The green ways represent OSM highway objects. Grab has edited over 100,000 turn restrictions in Singapore. We choose to highlight Grab's OSM editing work because it represents a highly focused effort put in by a single corporation in a specific place to build infrastructure needed to support their business directly. In doing so, Singapore is an incredible outlier in the density of turn restrictions, and we can only assume that routing uh, with OSM data is then much um, improved in Singapore. Overall, however, Grab's efforts of improving this data, especially this complex road topology and these restrictions, and building a community of editors in Southeast Asia is beneficial far more than just to their company, but for the entire OSM ecosystem and anyone using that data. The next company we'll look at more closely is Digital Egypt. As of March uh, 2020, Digital Egypt has edited more than 2 million features in Egypt. More than 1.7 million of these objects involve objects with the address tag. And these edits comprise 94% of the objects in Egypt that have an address tag. So similar to Grab, Digital Egypt's contributions are improving the usability of OSM data for everyone in North Africa specifically geocoding and place finding. So here's a heat map of Digital Egypt's editing activity. And here's a close-up of their work. Each yellow dot represents a node with addressing information. And here's another region. And that's Cairo. So unlike Grab, Digital Egypt does not operate their own services, such as routing uh, built on top of their data infrastructure. Their hyperlocal focus and dedication to improving data for a country with a dearth of spatial data distinguishes them from other corporations who are using the map within a product by instead making the local data the product itself. The third corporation of curious interest is Tesla. 
Tesla is an American manufacturer of electric cars that was found to be using OSM parking aisle information for their vehicle's self-driving summon feature. This information came to light in this November 2019 blog post on the Tesla Motors Club website. Tesla's summon feature allows an owner to instruct their vehicle to drive autonomously to them through a parking lot. One Tesla owner witnessed their vehicle take the circuitous route around the parking lot rather than driving directly to them at the front of the store. So they went to OSM. They updated the parking aisles in the map and returned to the lot to find that their Tesla had gotten smarter and knew about these new parking aisles. Therefore, it was discovered that Tesla must be ingesting OSM data as part of their routing. And not just the primary road network, but, that, but these very specific parking aisles. So for proper functionality, the summon feature requires detailed maps of parking aisles within larger parking lots. These data are relatively sparse as their utility to the overall map is minimal compared to the actual road network. We found that the average number of parking aisles added per day in North America increased by 71% between the timeframe of 2016 to 2018 and 2018 to 2020. So this blog post is partially responsible for the overall increase in interest. In the days following this blog post, the number of daily editors adding parking aisles within their first week of joining OSM spikes, as shown here in this figure, similar uh, to an increased interest in OSM following Pokemon Go. This single blog post inspired scores of Tesla fans to join OSM and, new parking, and add new parking aisles to the map, thereby mapping a very specific uh, object type for a very narrow purpose. So we like to think that these Tesla owners represent a new generation uh, of hobby and craft mappers in OSM. Unlike traditional craft mappers considered to altruistically contribute map data about a specific feature, um, the Tesla craft mappers create data intended to be consumed by a corporation to enhance the experience for a select group of motorists. If looking to categorize these new mappers into prior community labels, their mapping practices uh, seem to us to have more in common with a traditional craft mapper than a paid corporate mapper. And this is why we think Tesla is such a curious case. So that concludes our investigation of these three corporations and the influence they're currently having in OpenStreetMap. Each of these companies is benefiting and or sponsoring the map, um, mapping of very specific features. Grab has mapped an incredible number of turn restrictions in OSM and in turn increased the usefulness of OSM in Southeast Asia. Digital Egypt has added over a million addresses in Egyptian cities, massively improving the geocoding abilities of OSM data in North Africa. And finally, while Tesla may not uh, be directly sponsoring these mappers, their use of OSM is inspiring scores of mappers to sign up and add specific details to parking lots. Again, not unlike we saw with Pokemon Go. While we choose, chose these particular three cases because we had not investigated them in depth before, uh, though previous work and other presentations have shown these corporations to be engaged in object-specific editing in OSM. So we thought it was uh, good to dive into these three to tell a deeper story of what corporate involvement can look like in OSM. This is in part to act as a reminder that where the map fills in will always tie back to a special or specific interest, whether that be a personal interest, a humanitarian interest, or a corporate interest. We have no doubt that the global community will continue to grapple with interactions between these many different user groups. But at the end of the day, OSM has been and continues to be an incredible success in terms of open geographic data with great utility available to everyone. While we didn't highlight Amazon's editing in our work, we thought we'd share this geographic summary of the nearly 1 million edits made since January by Amazon Logistics in North America, which we can only assume has dramatically improved OSM-based routing. Again, a very specific type of OSM data use in the specific areas. However, let's close with a different graph. This shows a spike in yet another community of mappers in OSM that's seen major growth recently. This is the number of mappers submitting change sets about golf in the past two years. The spike in 2019 is likely related to a popular golfing simulator using OSM data. This looks pretty sim uh, similar to both the Tesla mappers and then interest from Pokemon Go players. 
We end on this graph to again reinforce the notion that the OSM community continues to expand and evolve as more people and companies adopt OSM. What might today be a curious case of OSM data will soon become another sub-community of OSM mappers. Thank you. This work is supported by the University of Colorado Boulder, the United States National Science Foundation, with data processing support from the Chameleon Cloud Scientific Computing Testbed. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Jennings and Dipto, for this very interesting uh, talk. Uh, of course, there are some questions, uh, given the high interest that this work um, generates. Just before uh, going to the Q&A session, let me just uh, say that uh, we are particularly happy to have uh, Jennings, in particular here, because Jennings, I think, is the only author who presented in the last, uh, uh, which are all the three editions of the academic right. track, 2018 in Milan, 2019 in Heidelberg, and 2020 online. Uh, conference. So uh, I think Jennings, you you kind of won this uh, this 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 um, uh, let's say competition. Uh, what to call it like that? So you are the only one, and we are particularly happy, especially given also the high interest of all your talks, not just of course this one. Um, but let's come back to the pad and let me just uh, go uh, to the first uh, question um, from Guillaume uh, Richard. Uh, the question is, if mapper A maps away and corporate mapper B cuts the way in two, do you count those, wa those ways as created or last edited by A or B? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, the answer is it kind of it kind of depends, um, and that's part of the reason why we are advocating for more of these these kind of deep dive, close investigations of what's happening, because I think we can get a big picture from quantifying these edits, but um, to to get into the nitpicking of what happened with this object here and this object, um, that becomes a lot more difficult to quantify. Um, kind of the hope with some of this analysis is that by, by quantifying it at a large scale, uh, we can get a better idea of kind of where it's happening and what to what extent, whereas um, some of those very specific edits are more difficult. So the short answer on that is that if um, counting, it depends on the data set that we're using for that. And we're kind of use multiple data sets for different different pieces of, of work here. Um, the OSM QA tiles will count that object as being last edited by the corporate mapper. And for that reason, um, like that initial statistic we give, which is as of March 2020, 17% of the of the global road network was quote last touched by a corporate editor. And that's kind of why we make that. Um, distinguishing um, kind of attribute on, on that because that is a difficult thing to measure. Now, that's the beauty of tools like the OSHDB and things that we can um, better uh, reconstruct the full history of OSM. And so this is what the OSM interactions tile set does, uh, which is built off of the OSHDB um, from, from Heidelberg. Um, that will allow us to look closer at that interaction, which says, okay, this road that was initially created by uh, this mapper and then corporate mapper came in and made an edit on that. It wasn't a new creation. And so we can't get at the nuance of that. So um, for the larger statistics, it does just say the corporate mapper did that because they were the last ones to touch the way. Um, however, when we dive into some of these things and we're looking at who created objects or just trying to use more specific language, then we are considering uh, that full editing, that full editing history. Thanks a lot, Jennings. I hope this answered the, the question from Guillaume. Uh, the second question uh, was, I think, more about the concept uh, uh, and, and the definition of corporation that you, you, you took, because there's a question on HOT, the humanitarian open street map team that uh, has done paid mapping in the past uh, and has employed people to do that. So why did you not look at that? Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, this is something... I, I should have included that slide in in in, in this talk, but uh, 
the way we've been kind of thinking about this now is like, I mean, OSM is this community of many communities at this point, and um, no, no mappers really fit that cleanly into any single box. And I think that's something that we want to, um, to kind of talk more about is as people are moving between different organizations, maybe someone starts out as a hobby mapper through a hot task and then end up being um, eventually employed by another organization. And so people are kind of moving through this community. And so we want to be really careful in how we just start putting people in boxes when we start kind of quantifying that. And so specifically what we were looking at um, in, in, in this work was trying to focus on just those corporations to try to identify these like specific, what we were calling these curious cases to get people kind of thinking about the impact this is having on the map overall. Um, in terms of the kind of corporations that we've been tracking and kind of watching this growth, um, those are the corporations that we um, kind of started with and are trying to find ways to now um, almost be more inclusive and find better ways to uh, quantify the differences between humanitarian and corporate, but more just like this overlap. And this is all this like con kind of conflated mapping. Um, so that's, that's kind of a wishy-washy answer to that. Um, I want to be very careful not to try to pit like corporate mappers against hobbyists, against humanitarians. I don't think that that's a constructive dialogue uh, of how the community is and how the map is being um, made. And so I want to be careful that that we don't necessarily um, do that. And so, yeah, that's kind of the answer is that it's all it's all very interconnected. Um, and then trying to figure out who is paid and who isn't, and it, it gets very difficult. So there's really hard lines to hard lines to draw. Thanks, Jennings. Uh, I fully agree with your with your with your um, answer um, on this topic. I just want to uh, point everyone to a talk that we had uh, a couple of years ago in the academic track titled "Evolution of Humanitarian Mapping Within the Open Street Map Community." who basically looked at the uh, activity on the hot tasking manager and how this uh, has grown over the years. So very interesting talk, somehow related to this question. Let me go to the next one uh, that is from Andy Allen uh, asking, uh, with the Grab Singapore editing, are all those restrictions actually necessary? One common problem in the past is companies adding unneeded turn restriction relations. For example, no writer into a no-entry one-way road. And then I will point you to the pad just to uh, have a look at the links, uh, for example, from Tag Info uh, that uh, uh, I think Andy um, uh, added. Fascinating. I'm going to bring up this link real, real quickly here. Um, so this is, a, this is a great question. Um, I think that there's... Uh, I think that probably the best the best answer to that is going to be the grab team. Um, I don't know uh, much about what they're how they're kind of organizing that or what decisions that they're making. Um, I just we're just trying to to report on what's in the data, which is that there's a lot of turn restrictions um, that they have been responsible for, um, and I'm assuming that since they're doing this, that the routing is improving in, in Singapore and that this is, and this is useful data uh, to the map in that regard. Um, I'm sure there's, there's, this is kind of a, yeah, somebody from, from, I'd be interested, I will follow up with someone at, at, at Grab to learn more about this because I think that there is something to be um, discerned here between like turn restrictions in their various parts of the world and the usability of that and, and how that, um, and, and how routing works across the world. So I think that's maybe the more interesting conversation to come to come out of that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think that would be an interesting conversation to to have with with the grab folks to learn about what's what's happening on the map there. So I think we found the topic for your next year's talk at State of the Map. Uh, <laughs> Okay, thanks uh, for the for the answer, and also thanks, Andy, for this interesting question. Of course, yes, yeah, some, sometimes it really uh, it's a matter of really uh, asking or really uh, try to go on the field, actually, if possible, and 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 see why something is happening. So, next question is from Gregory: um, Have you looked at the size of mapping teams per company and how that has changed, rather than looking at the number of edits per company? Interesting question. Certainly. Um, and the, the short answer is that on these larger companies, uh, these teams are definitely growing um, in the past couple of years. Um, 
as and and we're just getting that information by uh, reading, you know, their wiki pages and the GitHub pages for the data teams um, and what they're listing out. And um, and as we track those usernames, as us, uh, users come kind of through these companies, um, those lists are are generally growing. Um, and I believe I believe now there's something in our in our list is maybe around two thousand um, editors um, in total. And and um, that was in like March. Um, so yes, these teams are 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 growing. Um, certainly in the larger companies, I think some of the the smaller companies, I don't know if the teams have been growing as as rapidly. Thanks, Jennings, and uh, thanks also again, Gregory, for the question. Uh, next one is from Corey, and uh, the question is, how likely do you think it is that uh, these hyper niche mappers, I think this is about Tesla, um, will stay around to map more things outside of their narrow interests? Do you have any data that shows they have any rates of retention? Ah, that's a great follow-up uh, question. Um, I don't have any uh, any data so far that that would support that. That would be I, that would be kind of hard to measure, but I think we could because we can identify those those users that maybe signed up and mapped a parking aisle immediately after the Tesla blog post and and make kind of an assumption about that and then look at their continued behavior. I would imagine that the rate of retention is fairly similar to the global community of someone who learns about OSM, signs up, maps, and and you know a small percentage of them come back, and 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 the majority of them don't, and that's just internet communities in general. Um, but that would be something to definitely uh, dig dig more into. Um, some of that when I was just investigating like individual users on on some of that work, it was very interesting to see that they they mapped a parking aisle and then they mapped the highway uh, to to that parking lot, um, and this is like in suburban Texas or something. And then they also mapped their house, and so they basically mapped their full route from uh, like their house to like Home Depot or something. Um, and I don't know if they ended up coming back and keeping mapping because I was doing this kind of right when it was happening. Um, so that's that's interesting. So they did they did map more than just a parking aisle, um, but the parking aisle was kind of what started and then they started mapping this and they thought, oh, this is interesting. You know, they mapped their house in very critical detail. Um, and so I don't know what that tells you about them as a as a mapper. Um, and then I'd like to just quickly, uh, Dipto just had a good, uh, a great comment um, that the AI, uh, with AI mapping, um, the amount of mapping per mapper uh, might be increasing as well um, with some of the machine learning. Um, so back to the uh, editing team size, a smaller team will be able to do uh, more work uh, utilizing um, with machine learning. I don't know what those what that might break down to, but that is something that might um, change in terms of number of edits versus versus number of employees. Great, thanks uh, Jennings and again, Corey for the question. Uh, next one is from Eugene. Uh, some corporate mappers are mapping part-time for a company and also they do volunteer mapping on their own. The chain sets are generally differentiated by the presence of a chain set hashtag if the mapper uses the same OSM user account. And again, this is about your methodology. So mm -hmm. did you take this uh, into account? Um, in some ways, and so some companies, example, cart, that's a, that's a great example. Um, they will usually have hashtag cart um, or cart 2019, cart 2020 uh, in the change set, which is a great way to, to distinguish that. Um, and there's also other companies um, that where they will have like underscore telenab at the end of a username, for example, to denote that that's their kind of corporate account versus someone's personal account and then versus like someone's import account. So that's another way um, that some of this, uh, these distinctions are made. Um, this current round of analysis does not account for um, users that are on corporate teams that do, may do mapping um, in their spare time, um, not for a company. It does not account for them um, using or not using that um, hashtag but that is certainly something important um to consider what we to the best of our ability when we see names coming off and on these lists of uh, data team members um our users as they uh, may, may move between um uh different companies or get hired or leave a company and we try to you know attribute those edits to the appropriate company that's been the the hardest part to kind of track right now 
but I think a big part, a big next part will be um, those users uh, that, that, that do both of that type of mapping. And that's something to really highlight there that that user will ultimately, will often get kind of lumped into this, like into the corporate bin when really that's not fair because they're also in these other, um, in these, in these other communities of mappers. And so I think that that's another thing to highlight some of the nuance of, um, of how we talk about this. Um, cause these aren't just, that's not just a, a corporate mapping team, no matter how someone feels about that at some point, that's also like just a community member and an editor. Um, and so I think that's, these are important distinctions to, uh, to make and, and, and bring to light. Thanks a lot. And let's go to the next one um, from Yust. Uh, do you think it's feasible to look at the displacement of volunteer mappers? Uh, questions like, does a heavily corporate map area have a higher tendency to lose other mappers? Or do they shift their attention? Or does the hopefully increased data quality bring more people who are interested? Yes, that is a great question. Um, that is something that I think we hinted at at the end of last year's talk. Um, and the answer is that that is something we really want to try to quantify um, a little bit um, more precisely before saying something um, like that, because you can imagine that could be a very divisive statement um, within the community. And we haven't been able to kind of say one way or the other, we end up finding these kind of interesting behaviors that we've been diving into. And I think that that's because the answer to that is it totally depends on the location and the, and the motivation for that mapping and, and what's happening there. Um, and so I think that there are, um, I, I think that's, that's kind of the, the, the simplest answer to that is that that's just a very difficult thing to, actually quantify it has potential to be kind of a, a a divisive and harmful narrative that could get kind of spun out of that and so we want to be really careful about how we measure that and make sure we're getting that right and i think the answer is it really depends on where and and if there is a community in, in an established local community that might feel like they're being displaced um we could probably find instances of every of, of all of this um around the globe and that's why we haven't um kind of come out inside one way or the other um, but that's definitely something for future work. And if there's more collaborations or ideas around how we might quantify that or how we might um, kind of talk about that in a, in a constructive way, um, uh, constructive for the whole community and the growth and quality of the map, um, I'm, I'm all ears. I do think that's a very important um, uh, aspect. Thanks, Jennings. I think questions like these really show how interesting it is to study OSM from a research point of view. So thanks again, uh, used also for the question. And uh, yeah, much more to hopefully come uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. So next question is um, from Anonymous and uh, it is uh, uh, about, well, uh, is there anything you are willing to say about Google on the topic of corporate mapping? I know it might be not relevant. <laughs> um. That's super interesting. Um, I, I have nothing to say, or but I'm, I'm, I'm not willing or not willing. Um, I, I don't know anything about uh, uh, Google um, in regards to this. Um, I, I think this is relevant to a point, and this was a comment that I kind of made, I believe, on uh, Frederick's talk yesterday. Um, that I think that I don't I don't know about Google's mapping approach or anything there, but I think that this is on the topic of corporate mapping. Um, I think that there is, uh, you know, we're seeing OSM really filling in across the globe and at an increased rate. And so, in terms of relevance to Google, um, there are many places now, um, perhaps um, uh, emboldened by corporate mapping, um, and now places with stricter validation or just more eyes that have seen it, that, um, that OSM is definitely a, a major rival in terms of a data source, not as a product, but as a data source, um, to, to what Google's able to do. Um, so I think that they're paying attention to this. Um, but that's, um, that's kind of all I, all I know. If anyone does know more about Google and how they feel about all this or how, how, we internally as a community might measure up to um, their scale of, of, of mapping and what they're doing. Um, 
who has better tools. Um, at this point, our tools have gotten really, really good. Um, so these are kind of some some great questions that I'd love to talk more about, but I don't um, I don't I don't know anything about that. So if people do um, would love to would love to talk. Yeah, I think that would be really uh, fertile ground for further uh, research and discussion, uh, perhaps. So next question is from Tobias. Um, do you have any statistics or sources on where the corporation's paid mappers are based geographically? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, no, nothing that I can say with, with confidence. Um, I think we can make a lot of assumptions. I believe that Digital Egypt's work is a lot, um, is, is, is mostly based in, in Cairo, based on where they're editing and the, the knowledge that they seem to have. Um, other than that, um, I guess I, I'm not entirely uh, sure, um, other than, you know, looking at these companies' um, websites and seeing, like, where they're, where they're, where they're based. Um, but I don't, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure on that. I think that would be kind of interesting um, to, to look at and if there's a correlation on uh, regions of the world that are being mapped. And, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure what that, what that looks like. That's a great question. Thanks a lot. And we have the last uh, question. Uh, what about outsourced uh, mapping companies like Global Logic? And this is from Eugene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that is a, that's a great question. Um, yeah, we just haven't, we haven't kind of caught up um, in our list of, um, uh, of, of companies to be tracking like that. Um, because to our knowledge, we haven't seen a list of the global log, you know, we can only measure what we can find. Um, so we haven't seen a list of the global logic, um, editors, um, at the time when we started making our lists, um, of corporations that we were tracking, um, we focused on kind of the, 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 the top uh, companies at that time and have just kind of extended that work. So, um, if I'm just behind, if we're just behind on uh, on tracking these lists, and there are more uh, more lists of these of of, of data team editors, um, please point me in that direction, and would love to um, kind of add them so we can keep keep quantifying um, keep quantifying these. Thanks, Jennings. Uh, we have also a series of comments in the pad, uh, but given the time restrictions we have, I propose that I would very quickly go through the comments and okay. you reply with just one very short sentence. So we try to really be quick and uh, go through these uh, long, yeah, quite long list of comments. So are you ready? I'm ready. So your globe looks really cool. Thank you. <laughs> Here, Matt, hire data digitization companies to populate OSM for them, periodically importing this data into their own platform. Yes, I absolutely believe that. Um, difficult to kind of difficult to 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 track, um, but I think this is a fantastic. Not a fan, this is an example of like all these new use cases of OSM and how the data is being generated. Um, I think that's this is this is what's been not even that new. This is what's been happening for for a while. Um, and so yeah, the more kind of stories like this show the the nuances. There was also a map roulette challenge for Tesla parking aisles. Super interesting. I actually didn't come across that. Um, I wish I had earlier and I will um, look that up or someone can point me to that. Uh, we'll take that into account because that's obviously going to correlate. Then a comment about Tesla using uh, GPS or uh, imagery. Let me just read the final uh, part. So all I know is with imagery plus minus five meters offset, any such mapping will just do more damage than good. Okay, so they are certainly not using ID or cell phone GPS traces. Okay, so ask them to share their secret tools. <laughs> yes, again, highlighting these very nuanced cases of these of these new uh, uh, pieces and of tools and data that's coming into the community, and um, I hope that that prompts um, you know more conversations around how can we get all the best parking aisle um, information in, o in OSM. Great talk and so important to have this discussion. Looking to our own community, the challenge for us could be to strengthen mappers, editors and validators at all levels, remote and local. Perhaps rather than lament the niche mapping of corporations, let's take responsibility, do our bit and find ways to benefit from all the communities in OSM. Thanks, Enni, for this. I love that. Well, nice to see someone is presenting the three years uh, in a row. <laughs> Thanks again, Thank Jennings. 
<laughs> this research has so much potential. OSM should really get on board with these researchers. I I feel like um, I've been doing this this research for a while. Dipto and I have been looking at this for at least the last two years, uh, specifically into this, and I definitely feel um, kind of very much on board um, and a part of the OSM community. Um, so I'm happy to happy to be here and and doing this work. Um, I've become kind of passionate about this now. So I think this is I love this. Thanks, Jennings. Let me just add that the, there is actually a, um, an OSM science mailing list, which is exactly a mailing list for uh, uh, research or scientific uh, contributions around OpenStreetMap. So I would really invite everyone to join that mailing list and to ask questions because uh, basically researchers and people like Jennings are there and uh, would be very happy to uh, engage in discussions around topics like these. Next comment, don't let Google put their address database on the map, else all my friends will be sent to the wrong side of town. <laughs> it's funny, I like the PS there, you can't get a word in edgewise to Google. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what OSM is for. <laughs> okay, whatever view of WGS84 they are using will now become OSMs due to their amount of edits. So expect everybody's craft edits will have to all move over to align with them. So I sure hope they are not misaligned. Yeah, interesting. I'm saying all this corporate editing is great if it is perfectly aligned. Okay, as a follow-up, sorry. <laughs> and then, yeah, again, from uh, I think the same user, the same, uh, yeah, the same person, won't OSM end up with twos of things? Wouldn't it be faster for companies to just add a new second road rather than check for an existing road and edit or at least delete it first? I don't necessarily think that's think that's true. Um, I don't know that it would be faster for companies just to add add roads. Um, I think there's there's nothing that unique about how the companies might doing might be doing it as opposed to any other mapper. So I think that's more of a question of the tools and the abilities that we do have to to map. I think um, um, yeah, that's kind of that's 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 interesting. And I think there have been other talks and at least it talks in the past. Um, that have talked about some of these validation efforts and 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 how to be more um, more robust in, in how we go about uh, go about, about that. Um, so it's interesting. Thanks, Jennings. And I think we we completed all the comments. Before uh, saying bye bye to everyone, let me just share quickly my screen just to remind you all that. Uh, uh, the uh, academic track also produced the proceedings, uh, which uh, are the co a collection of abstracts corresponding to all the 10 talks uh, that you have seen um, today in track two of the conference, plus also an editorial written by the scientific um, committee. You can very easily find it on Zenodo, the name of the community's uh, uh, SOTM 2020. Uh, 20. You can very easily um, find it uh, online and it, uh, it's also linked from the uh, from the website of the um, um, of the conference of course you will also find uh, the uh, abstract from Jennings and Dipto that you have just um, um, uh, seen uh, as a talk um, last but not least I would like to close not just this talk but also the whole academic track um, at state of the map 2020 with some uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all my colleagues of the scientific committee of the academic track, um, Serena, uh, Levente, uh, Godwin, uh, Yair, and Peter, uh, for their help in putting all of these um, um, together. Um, the conference, the abstracts, and the proceedings. Um, so thanks a lot, because, uh, I, I mean, we all know that there's a huge work behind uh, these. Um, then, thanks to all our beautiful uh, speakers of the academic track, uh, Jennings, Dipto, and all the others, because, of course, without them, there wouldn't have been any academic track at all. Uh, thanks to the State of the Map Working Group, and Christine, uh, first of all, Martin, and all the team, um, including the uh, Cape Town local team, um, Bernal, and all the others. Um, and uh, last but not least, really, thanks to the video team for uh, providing us with a great uh, infrastructure. And uh, really, you all deserve a big applause, because without you, there wouldn't have been any um, conference. So. Um, Thanks again from me. I invite you now to have a break, a dinner break or lunch uh, or uh, any other kind of break, depending on where you are. And i uh, see you at 8 uh, p.m. UTC time for uh, a couple of uh, more talks. And then there will be the final 
uh, session and OSM quits and then the closing session from the um, uh, state of the map um, working group. Thanks again for attending and uh, uh, well, uh, speak to you soon in uh, one of uh, the many uh, OSM channels.